Falja. We are back today to continue our reading of the Tawn Bo Cunha with myself, Laura O'Brien. And this is a multi-episode series that I'm doing. So do check out the whole playlist if you're joining us on the first time here. This is one of my favorite episodes out of the whole ton. We even did a whole t-shirt about it over at Eel and Otter Press. So I'll drop a link to that below, actually, if you want to uh, have a look at it. But it is the foretelling of the ton. So I'm going to share my screen as usual. And we are going to go in. So this again is the English translation with Joseph Dunn and you have the Irish one on the screen as well, which is Vindishes, Ernst Vindishes. So the foretelling. When Maeve was come to the place where her druid was, she craved light and augury of him. Many there be, saith Maeve, who do part with their kinsmen and friends here today, and from their homes and their lands, from father and from mother, and unless unscathed every one shall return, upon me will they cast their sighs and their ban, for it is I that have assembled this levy. Yet there goeth not forth, nor stayeth there at home, any dearer to me than are we to ourselves. And do thou discover for us whether we ourselves shall return or whether we shall never return. So basically she's saying here that everybody who goes out today and leaves their kinsmen and their friends and their homes and their lands and their fathers and their mothers and everything, right? That unless they're in skate, they'll return. But it's going to be on her, right? Because if they don't return, because she's the one that has gathered them here, right? So she's feeling that way. But she's saying that basically there's not one of them who's dearer than, than you know, me, myself. And uh, what, what do you have as a foretelling for me? So the Druid made answer, whoever comes not, thou thyself shall come. So no matter who doesn't come home, you're coming home, right? So that's what he says to Maeve. Wait then, spake the charioteer, let me wheel the chariot by the right, that thus the power of a good omen may arise, that we return again. Then the charioteer wheeled his chariot around, and Maeve went back again, and when she espied a thing that surprised her, a lone virgin of marriageable age, standing on the hind pole of a chariot, a little way off, drawing nigh to her, and thus the maiden appeared. Before we get into the maiden of uh, the virgin of marriageable age, right? This idea that they are turning to the right, this is the jeshel or the sunwise turn. And we see this really, really commonly through the texts. And obviously it has made its way into modern uh, Wiccan tradition uh, originally and well maybe not originally actually but um, but certainly it, it was popularized in the the neo-pagan revival with the uh, traditional Wicca and the idea that a blessing would be had by turning sunwise is as I said very common throughout the Irish chariot and this is one example of it right so the lone virgin of marriageable age such a healthy way to describe a young woman who uh, appears randomly um, as Maeve is going about her business, right? Weaving lace was she, and in her right hand was a bordering rod of silvered bronze with its seven strips of red gold at the sides. A many-spotted green mantle around her, a bulging strong-headed pin of gold in the mantle over her bosom, a hooded tunic with red interweaving about her, a ruddy, fair-faced countenance she had, narrow below and broad above. Heart-shaped face, I believe they call that in modern parlance. She had a blue-gray and laughing eye. Each eye had three pupils. Dark and black were her eyebrows. The soft black lashes threw a shadow to the middle of her cheeks. Red and thin were her lips. Shiny and pearly were her teeth. Thou wouldst believe they were showers of white pearls that had rained into her head. Like the fresh Parthian crimson were her lips. As sweet as the strings of lutes, when long sustained, they are played by master player's hands, was the melodious sound of her voice and her fair speech. 
as white as snow in one night fallen was the sheen of her skin and her body that shone outside of her dress. Slender and very white were her feet, rosy even sharp round nails she had, rosy even sharp round nails she had, two sandals with golden buckles about them, fair yellow long golden hair she wore, three braids of hair she wore. Two tresses were round, were wound about her head, sorry, were wound around her head, wound around her head. The other tress from behind threw a shadow down on her calves. So she had three plaits and two of them were wound about her head, either in Princess Leia style or in crown style, I would imagine. And then one long plait down the side. Okay, so all of that big, long, flowery text um, is, there's definitely some of it in the Irish, but I just want to note that um, this translation uh, probably has taken a little bit of artistic license, shall we call it, right? Um, I mean, I see uh, schnock, though, which is snow. I, I don't speak old Irish, so it's difficult for me to kind of translate on the fly, right? But um, this is her cloak, broth, uh, breathness, thurok, um, definitely mention of purple something. Yeah, so there's going to be some basics in here, right? Like I said, Old Irish is a very different language to the modern Irish that I speak. Um, but uh, this has definitely taken some level of artistic license with the original description, right? So Maeve gazed at her. And what doest thou here now, O maiden, asked Maeve. Um, I impart to thee thine advantage and good fortune in thy gathering and muster of the four mighty provinces of Erin against the land of Ulster on the raid for the kine of Coolnia. Wherefore doest thou this for me, asked Maeve. Much cause have I, a bondmaid mid thy people am I. So why are you here? Um, I'm here to give you an advantage and good fortune as you're going about your business. Um, why are you doing that? Maeve says, and she says, well, I'm here because I'm a bondmaid in your people. So I'm of your people, right? So who of my people art thou and what is thy name? Asked Maeve. Not hard in sooth to say. The prophetess Fidelm from the She, the fairy mound of Croacon, a poetess of Connacht am I. So I'm just going to check the, so poetess here is translated from ban o, which is a seer, basically. So pro, prophetess, oh sorry, prophetess um, is ban o, yeah, that's right. I should not be translating this on the fly, I'm making a fucking tit of myself here, right? Anyway. Um, that bit is, so she's out of the cave of Croacon, right? Um, this is interesting because she lives through the she, so she lives in the other world, right? But she is naming herself as one of Maeve's people. So that is interesting, right? So whether she's a human that lives in the other world or a, a person of the she, a banshee, um, who is included in Maeve's kingdom, um, either of those are interesting. So whence comest thou whence comest thou asked Maeve I'm sorry I'm messing this up here from Alba after learning prophetic skill the maiden made answer so from Scotland um, she's learned her prophecy in Scotland hast thou the form of divination verily have I the maiden said look then for me how will my undertaking be the maiden looked then spake Maeve good now oh tell Ophidelm prophet maid how beholdest thou our host? Fidelm answered and spoke, Crimson red from blood they are, I behold them bathed in red. So you'll see this translated as um, icy crimson, icy red, right? Um, there are multiple translations of it. Uh, this one I particularly like. Crimson red from blood they are, I behold them bathed in red. That is no true augury, said Maeve. Verily, Concor with the Ulstermen is in his pains in Evan. Thither fared my messengers and brought me true tidings. Naught is there that we need dread from Ulster's men. But speak truth, O Fidelm. So Maeve is saying, 
the Ulster men are suffering from the curse, which is the pangs of the Ulster men, which is the curse that Maka put on them. I didn't post that story of Maka. There's a, uh, there's a, po there's a, don't know if I linked to it in previous video, but if you go onto my blog at lauraobrien.ie, there is a story that I, I wrote, um, which is based on the, the curse of Maka. So, um, but speak truth, O Fidelm. Tell, O Fidelm, prophet made, how beholdest thou our host? So our host is the gathering army, right? Or the, the gathered army. And Fidelm is saying, crimson red from blood they are, I behold them bathed in red. Owen, Durhacht's son, is in Rath Arher, the eastern Rath, in his pains. Thither went my messengers. Not need we dread from Ulster's men, but speak truth, O Fidelm. So she's going through the, so Connor, oh, I'm after skipping one. My apologies. Um, so basically, she goes through it and she says, Cuscara men, the stammerer of Maka, Concor's son, is in Inish Kruoka. Inish Kushkra. Inish Kushkra, in his pains. So Maeve has gotten these messengers back and they have specifically checked on all these Ulster heroes, right? My apologies there for messing that up. But she specifically checked on all these Ulster heroes and they are all suffering from the pangs or the pains of a woman in childbed, in childbirth, because that was the curse that uh, Maka put on them. And that's one of the, the revshkel, the, the pre-tales of the taunt. So we'll carry on. Keltkar, Uthakar's son, is in his fort at Lethglas in his pains, and a third of the Ulster men are with him. Thither fared my messengers. Naught have we to fear from Ulster's men. And Fergus, son of Roy, son of Ochi, 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 because Ochar is key, so Ochi would be um, how you pronounce that, I believe. And Fergus, son of Roy, son of Ochi, is with us here in exile, and thirty hundred with him. But speak truth, O Fidelm. Tell, O Fidelm, prophet made, how beholdest thou our host? Crimson red from blood they are, I behold them bathed in bread. In red? What is wrong with me today? I'm so sorry. Maybe I should just start again. I probably won't start again. You're probably just going to get this as is, because I don't edit, so, you know, just bear with me. Me seemeth this not as it seemeth to thee, quoth Maeve, for when Aaron's men shall assemble in one place, their quarrels will arise, arise and broils, contentions and disputes amongst them about the ordering of themselves in the van or the rear, at ford or river, over who shall be first at killing a boar or a stag or a deer or a hare. But now, but look now again for us and speak truth, O Fidelm. So Maeve just cannot fathom what she's hearing here because she knows that when the the men of Ireland gather um, they're fighting over who's the first to kill an animal never mind a, a, a bang a man up in childbirth or effectively in childbirth right in the same pains as a woman in childbirth right so Fidelm keeps going tell Fidelm prophet made tell O Fidelm, prophet made, how beholdest thou our host? So Maeve just keeps coming back because she cannot understand how this same answer is coming back. And Fidelm just gives it to her again. Crimson red from blood they are, I behold them bathed in red. Therewith she began to prophesy and to foretell the coming of Cúchulain to the men of Aaron, and she chanted a lay. Fair of deeds the man I see, wounded sores his fair skin. On his brow shines hero's light, Victory seat, victory seat is in his face. Seven gems of champions brave deck the center of his orbs. Naked are the spears he bears, and he hooks a red cloak round. Noblest face is his, I see. He respects all womankind. Young the lad and fresh his hue, with a dragon's form in fight. I know not who is the hound. Cullen's height of fairest fame, but I know full well this host will be smitten red by him. Four small swords, a brilliant feat, he supports in either hand. These he'll ply upon the host, each to do its special deed. His gay bulga too he wields, with his sword and javelin. 
Lo, the man in red cloak girt sets his foot on every hill. Two spears from the chariot's left he casts forth in orgy wild, and his form I saw till now, well I know will change its guise. On to battle now he comes, if ye watch not ye are doomed. This is he seeks ye in fight, brave Cúchulain, Shultum's son. All your host he'll smite in twain, till he works your utter ruin, all your heads he'll leave with him, Fidelm prophet maid hides not. Gore shall flow from warrior's wounds, long twill live in memory, bodies hacked and wives in tears, through the smith's hound whom I see. Thus far the augury and the prophecy and the preface of the tale and the occasion of its invention and, in, and conception and the pillow talk which Alil and Maeve had in Crochon. Next follows the body of tale, it's of the tale itself. <clears throat> so a little recap there for you um, from the, the author, All right? So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications because I'm not doing these every day, but um, I'll do them as often as I can and hopefully do a better job on them. My apologies for that. Uh, leave a comment below if you're enjoying this because it really helps the channel and helps me keep going because this is very much community service for me and um, I really appreciate all your comments. Okay, so um, it's longer full and I will, it's longer full, and I will see you in the next video, okay?